With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Um, hello everyone. Uh, it is another Bible study time. And uh, we welcome you to another of this edition, Time with God. Uh, please, um, we plead, invite all members of your family to join you if you're at home. And if you're not at home, help us copy the link of this particular program from your timeline and uh, send it to all your contacts and also help us tweet at it whatsapp it and also instagram it so people can join us and share the knowledge of the word of god uh with us and the lord bless you as you do so in the name of jesus you will never lack any good things in your life in the name of jesus if this is your first time of joining us this is time with god our weekly bible study from the new heart christian ministries we are from essex in the united kingdom we come together like this to learn at the feet of the Almighty God, who is the God of all wisdom, uh, knowledge, and understanding, and power. Praise God. The Bible says, The word of God is the light unto my feet. Is the lamp unto my feet? Is the illumination unto my feet? Oh yes, you will need to know this word before it can be a light unto your feet. And one of the reasons we come to learn and study together. Praise God. As the word of God says, you will know the truth, and that truth which you know will set you free. Praise God. All that matters is studying and learning the word of God and knowing the truth, and then apply that particular truth to your lives, and everything shall go well with you in the name of Jesus. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, we thank the almighty God, uh, the unchanging changer, uh, our forever reigning Lord for another day. That he has given us the grace to witness. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord Jehovah God. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you all. Those who have been joining us on this program for your time and your support. May the blessings of the Almighty God reach out to you and all that are yours in Jesus' name. Um, let me quickly say this. If you want to comment or ask any question during this Bible study, please write it at the bottom of this particular video. Write it at the bottom of this video. And if it is possible for us, to respond we will respond before the end of the program or oh, and if you can if you're unable to do that we just bring the response to you next week praise god today today our study will be focusing um on the um the teachings on john the baptist we started this uh, particular series which we called the great people of the bible a few weeks ago with glory to god we have done a uh, three series of moses you can watch that on your YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, today is the turn of John the Baptist to study about him. We will be going through his life and see what we can learn from this wonderful prophet of God. Praise God. But before we do that, before we do that, uh, let us invite our sister in the Lord to, uh, to lead us in praise and worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, our Heavenly Father. We honor you. What can we do without you? What can we say than to say thank you for all your goodness? You've been so, so <clears throat> faithful unto us. Our heart is full of worship, of praise, of adoration to the King of glory who deserves it or you deserve our praise, our worship, our everything because you've been so kind, you've been so good unto us. We can't just... If you start counting our blessings and start naming them one by one to see what we have done in our lives, oh my God, till daybreak, we will still be here. We just want to say thank you, our Heavenly Father. We say, Blessed be your holy name. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for everything you are doing in our lives, how you have been moving 
in our situation every day of our life as we go out in the morning you bring us back home safely so many people they have lost their lives some people are passed on but we are still in your presence glorifying your holy name because you deserve our praise you have kept us alive we say thank you jesus the lover of our soul thank you for bringing us into your presence tonight we thank you because you are here before we even came here because you said your righteousness we go before us and we know you are here before we came oh lord we welcome you holy spirit of the living god we can't do anything we can't have a successful prayer i mean um bible studies tonight without you in our midst have your way take all the glory from the beginning to the end rain like never before touch souls tonight like never before oh lord we pray your holy spirit your word will not depart from us we not only be the hearers of your word but doers of your word all the days of our life so that we can all make it to heaven when the time comes even in the mighty name of jesus we shall not be left behind even in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of the living God, as we begin to praise you, to honor you, Father, accept our praises, accept our worship, even in the name of Jesus, even tonight. Because you are the lover of our soul, you are everything unto us. We never let it go. We love you so much, our darling Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' most precious name, I have prayed. Jesus... Lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock. Now I know I love you. I love you, I need you, though my word may fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end, Jesus Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go, oh yeah, you've taken me from the miry clay, you set my feet upon the rock, now I know. I love you, I need you, though my word may fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end, Jesus Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go, no way, you've taken me from the miry clay, you set my feet upon the ground, now I know I love you. I love you, I need you, I need you, yeah. Though my word may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my Savior, yeah. My closest friend, yeah. I will worship you until the very end. Sing Jesus Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go, oh yeah, you've taken me from the miry clay, you set my feet upon the rug, now I know I love you. I love you, I need you, 
I need you, yeah. Do my what me for? I'll never let you go. My savior, my savior, my closest friend. Yeah, yeah. I will worship you until the very end. I will worship you until the very end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you until the very end. In the powerful name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I will worship you. We will worship you, Almighty God Father, for the rest of our lives. The Bible says, me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We will worship the Almighty God Father. Amen. And praise God. We thank our sister in the Lord for that praise and worship. May the Lord continue to bless you and uh, strengthen you from strength to strength. You will not lose your goal in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We are welcome back again to um, our Bible study. Like I said, please uh, let your friends, let, they, let them share from this. Your family member, let them share from this. Um, Bible story today. We are going to be uh, studying about John the Baptist, John the Baptist, John the Baptist. Mm. Praise God. Um, like I said earlier on, within the past few weeks now, we have been doing a series on the great people of the Bible. Okay, these are heroes. We are talking about heroes, those who have, in one way or the other, played significant roles which have led to their names being written in the Holy Bible. Praise God. Um, not everyone ended in the good book of God. Okay, not everyone ended in the good book of God. But we still learn from them. We still learn from them. These, these heroes are numerous, ranging from kings to peasants. There are some things we can learn from these people, reason why all they did were recorded down for us to learn. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, verses 16 to 17, that every content of the Bible are from God. They are God's breath. Every single line of it, every single word of it, every stroke of it, God inspired those writers who were carefully and divinely chosen. And what they wrote down for us are useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, servant of God, and that is you and I, may be thoroughly equipped with every, every good work. Praise God. So, for instance, in the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, the Lord said to Moses, write these on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. God said, listen to what God said. God said, write it on a scroll for remembrance purposes. So every content of the scriptures were put down for you and I to learn from it. So today, it is on John the Baptist. We don't talk much about him most of the time because some of us believe that he was not that significant. But this man lived a truthful life and not left behind a life that you can embrace, emulate, and follow as Christians um, and uh, as children of God. He preached the forthcomingness of God's final judgment and baptized those who repented in self-preparation for it. Praise God. You know, um, John the Baptist is revered in the Christian church as the forerunner of Jesus Christ. This was a man that Jesus said about in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 that among those born of women, there's not reason one greater than John the Baptist. This is what we are talking about today. But we see this greatness as we study the story of John the Baptist, his life, and how he was born. How long his ministry lasted for? What was his ministry all about? How did he die? Who killed him and why? And that's so on like that. We are going to learn much uh, about John the ba uh, Baptist. Praise God. Um, the life of John the Baptist was captured in all the four canonical gospels. Uh, we are talking about the book of Matt, uh, Matthew. You can read from chapter 3 and the book of Mark, chapter 1. Uh, and in the book of Luke, chapter 1 and the book of John. All the four synoptic gospels are 
they all, all they all carry the story of John the Baptist. Uh, this man was born to the family of two elderly barren couple who were much advanced in years. Okay, uh, his parents, they were much advanced in years and they were barren. Zechariah and Elizabeth, in a miraculous way, they had him. Uh, the book of Luke gave us the clue the, about the background of John's parent. Zechariah was a priest um, of the division of Abijah. The Abijah was one of the priesthood of Israel that was separated into 24 divisions. If we go back, if we go back a little bit, okay, we will see uh, in the book of First Chronicles chapter 24 how priesthood was shared among the descendants of Aaron to enable them share the services in the temple of the Lord equally. Okay, and there are four, there are there are twenty-four divisions, and Abijah was was one of this uh, this particular division. Zechariah's father um, of John the Baptist was from the Abijah family tree. Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, John's mother, was a descendant of Aaron. Okay, so you, so you know that uh, both of them they are they are they have a Levite uh, tribe of Levite. Uh, the Bible said that both of them were righteous in the sight of God. Observing all the lost commands and decree blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. And they were both very old. Very, very old. But they keep, they keep on serving. See, they keep on serving. So these divisions did rotate serving in the house of God. So if it is someone this week, it will be someone else at the following week. So one day, while burning incest through his own turn to serve, while large numbers of poor shepherds were outside praying, so the angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah in the temple. He was serving, he was born in incest, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him. When Zechariah saw the angel, fear gripped him. But the angel told him that, do not be afraid, man, Zechariah, because look, I'm here. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. I'll bear you a son. And you are to call him John. That is going to be his name, John. It will be um, a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord he is never to take wine or other fermented drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord dear God and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah hmm. to turn the earth of the parents to their children and the disobedient um, to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That was what the angel of the Lord told the Zechariah. Praise God. Okay, praise God. Hope you are following me. Right. Um, one thing is that it is unique. When God names a child before the birth of the child, and there are a host of people in the Bible that were named before they were born. Okay, like John the Baptist now, we have Ishmael in the book of Genesis chapter 16 verse 11. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 2, we have Josiah, we have Isaac in the book of Genesis, and we have Solomon in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 9. Even our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, okay, we have him named before he was born. And what the child will do are always included in the announcement. So, in the case of John the Baptist, the angel said to Zechariah, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and they will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. Praise God! To turn the earth of their parents to their children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Praise God! To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Prepare for the Lord. Like you and I, when we are not certain of some things, when we are not certain of some things, uh, Zechariah queries the angel that how will he you know this way come to pass? Uh, the angel could see that he was an old man and his wife too was well advanced in years. Hmm? He, he was worried. The man was worried. The angel answered him that his name was Angel Gabriel. I'm Angel Gabriel who stands in the presence of the Lord. Just to assure him that what he was saying was authentic. And that he has been sent to break the good news to him. To prove that this will come to pass. The angel to Zechariah. 
you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens. Okay? You will be mute. You won't be able to utter the word because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. This takes effect immediately as his voice ceased to function. Zechariah couldn't speak again. When they came out of the temple to those that had been waiting so long and could not speak, he suspected that hmm, he might have seen vision as he could only make sign and couldn't utter the word. The Bible said that after those days, Elizabeth conceived, but stayed out of sight for five months, saying, The Lord has done this for me. She said, In those days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. So that word will come from those people who are actually expecting from the Lord in the name of Jesus. If you have been waiting on the Lord for fruit of the womb and you've been crying every day, you've been saying, Lord, have you forgotten me? Your voice, God will put that word into your mouth. We are going to say these days, he has shown his favor at taking away my disgrace among the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Those people who have been mocking you, they will start to swallow their words in the name of Jesus Christ. And those people who have been laughing at you, they will come and rejoice with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be hopeful. Be hopeful. Be hopeful. Praise God. Um, please do not forget that it is God that gives children and not anyone. Not anyone. Even Satan cannot give children. And when a woman tends to be waiting for so long to conceive, people around behave somehow to the person. And that was um, what Elizabeth was saying here that the Lord has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Praise God. Similar word of thanksgiving. Anna said when she had Samuel. Similar word. She said, praise God. So, six months after this, St. Angel Gabriel was sent to Mary, a virgin who has been betrothed to marry Joseph, a man from the house of David. Okay? We call him um, Land of Judah. The angel told Mary that she has found favor with God and that she will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendant forever. His kingdom will never hurt. That's about Jesus now. Uh, because the angel, um, the angel appeared to, after he has appeared to um, Elizabeth, six months after, angel Gabriel also appeared to Mary and started telling all this to Mary and that um, she's going to have a child. Praise God. And he's going to call his name this. And uh, the child is going to become this. He's going to become that. Okay. So, um, like um, Anna too. Uh, like, sorry. Like, as um, uh, Elizabeth too asked um, uh, the angel. Um, um, sorry. The, uh, Zechariah asked the angel that, um, how is it going to be possible? You know, I'm old and my wife is old. So, Mary too. Mary too asked. Okay. Like Zechariah too. The, uh, how will this be? Since I'm a virgin, since I'm a virgin, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be called the Son of God. Even, now this is where I'm going now, even, angel said, Elizabeth, your relative, that is Zechariah's wife, is going to have a child in her old age. And she too, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her six month Pregnancy now, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered. Mary answered then that may your word to be be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. We need to understand her here that, based on what the angel said to Mary, Elizabeth, mother of John the Baptist, and Mary, mother of Jesus, were relatives. According to what the angel said, that even though your relative is now six months pregnant. This means that John and Jesus were probably cousins. That time, there wasn't mobile phone or telephone, okay? There wasn't any way for those two women to speak and rejoice with one another than want to visit the other. She 
it was probably only Mary that knew now of Mommy Lizzie's pregnancy. Okay? It's only Mary that knew now that Elizabeth is pregnant. The Bible says that Mary now arose in those days and visited the family of Zechariah. When she got there, she entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. As Elizabeth had the greatest of Mary, the baby inside her lived in her womb. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Right from the womb, John has been great. The angel has said that he will be full of the Holy Spirit from the womb. I'm talking about John now. This leaping was a sign of the power from above that could sense the presence of the coming Messiah. Are you with me now? Mary, now filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke with a loud voice. Now, sorry. Elizabeth, now filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke with a loud voice to Mary that blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will be in. But why I am so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Praise God. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Praise God. So, how did Elizabeth know that Mary will be pregnant as the Bible did not tell us she has been told by anyone? Only what she knew now was that at the visit of Mary and as she greeted Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit who overpowered her and she spoke under the power of that Holy Spirit. Anyway, um, Sister Mary, uh, that is uh, our Lord's mother, stayed with the family of Zechariah for about three months and left after which Mommy Lizzie gave birth and had a baby boy. Praise God. So everyone was happy for the family and how God has been so gracious to them. When it was the eighth day, it was time for the boy to be named and circumcised. Okay. Um, let me quickly say this. Naming a child on the eighth day uh, was simply a general practice, but not part of the covenant of God with Abraham. But circumcision was. As recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verses uh, 9 to 14. So at the naming ceremony of John, um, what they wanted to call him was Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth said no. He is to be called John. We don't know how she got to know that. Because maybe John um, Zechariah has written it down for, for her. This led to an argument. The family members were saying, no, no, we have to call him um, Zechariah. And John was saying, no, 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 you can't call him Zechariah, you have to call him Zechariah. So, uh, the argument is that to argue. Okay, you know, family, sometimes they always put to know uh, more than the parents of the child. So, they were telling her that no one in this family has ever been called with such a name. John! What John? So, they turned to the fathers. Um, since Zechariah could not talk, he asked for a tablet and writing too. And wrote down that the name of the boy shall be John which caught everyone there by surprise. <sighs> as, as soon as Zechariah finished writing, his tongue broke loose and he began to talk, praising God and prophesying. Everyone was astonished, wondering, what, what, what sort of child will this be? Praise God. Anyway, the Bible said that the child grew up and became strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his manifestation to Israel. So he was actually living in the desert. That is where he lived. Okay. John was born and Jesus too was born and they started to grow separately in different areas. The Bible did not tell us if they shared the same childhood together. Okay. The first time they met was in their 30s when they began their ministries according to the Bible. Okay, maybe they met when they were teenagers. The Bible didn't tell us. Don't let us forget that John was about six months older than Jesus, according to the conversation the angel had with Mary. We can conclude that Jesus and John were from miraculous conception. Praise God. So, if you are going to follow, if you are going to follow the Bible narration, the first time they met physically was after John had begun his ministry. The Bible said that the word of God came to John in the wilderness you know the bible said that he has been living on the desert he left there and went to all the region around jordan preaching a baptism of repentance and the remission of sins 
as contained in the book of Isaiah saying, and uh, this is what uh, the book of Isaiah said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The, the, the quote that John was using here was from the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 to 5. Praise God. So the new message of John was strange in the hearing of the people. They began coming to him to be baptized. They are now seeking the Lord. And this is how he came to be known as John the Baptist. He was, he was the one that brought baptism to reality. He brought the process of baptism by immersion to mankind. The book of Matthew quoted John to be wearing clothes made of camels here. Unlike some of us who like to dress um, in designer suit. Ah, designer suit and dresses. Um, this, guy, this guy only uh, wear clothing made from camels here. And um, he had leather belt around his waist with locusts and honey and uh, wild honey as his main food. Unlike us, all that, unlike us that always like to drench ourselves in various sumptuous food, fried rice, jollof rice, beans, plantain, all this kind of thing. Strange man, people were trooping to him, confessing their sins and getting baptized. He said to the crowds, coming to him, you brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. That is what he was telling them. And do not begin to say to all yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can actually raise up children for Abraham. And he said, the axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree, every single tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into fire. They were amused. Everybody was surprised by this type of message. So they asked him, okay, you've been telling us this. So what should we do then? He answered them, anyone who has to shed should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Okay, even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? That's what uh, the question the tax collectors um, asked him. Then the John told them, don't collect any money than you are required to. And uh, you know why he said that was that when the Roman government asked the tax collectors, to collect a certain amount of money. Okay. These tax collectors will now add their own to it. And the one added is their own earnings and makes the tax so high. So they don't like the tax collectors at all. Are you getting my point? They don't like the tax collectors. The reason they hated the tax collectors because they know that the one they put on the one for the government is that, that make the tax so high. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't exhort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content, be content with your pay. Praise God. You see, Egunje and all these illegal roadblocks in some countries, uh, we are law enforcement agencies, exhort money from people, has been going on for a very long time now. Praise God. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sanders are not worthy to untie. It will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fox is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his band, but it will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's what he told them. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them, the kingdom of God. Okay, thus they called John the forerunner who has come to preach the way for our Lord Jesus Christ. He told um, about Christ and said, I have been telling you about this one. I said, it's coming after me. It's more important than I because it lived before me. Did you hear that? From him, who are so much, we have all received long favor, one loving favor after another. The law 
was given through Moses, but love and favor and truth came through Jesus Christ. The much loved son is beside the father. No one has ever seen God, but Christ has made God known to us. Praise God. You see how John chose his calling carefully. Okay. He did not see, he's not talking about Jesus as a rival. He's not, he didn't see Jesus as a rival, not trying to make himself popular than Jesus. He's not doing that. This is not what many of us, um, of us practice. What can he do that I cannot do? That is, many of us have been saying that. Oh, what is this pastor can do that I cannot do? Oh, that man, what can he do I cannot do? But John chose his own calling carefully. He's, he was a forerunner. And that's what he has come to do. He was talking mainly about our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus is coming. The sanders who I cannot even claim. Okay? I'm baptizing you with water. But he's going to baptize you with fire. Okay, you will remember um, uh, Miriam what told Moses that uh, uh, um, after all, what can Moses, Moses was, was a prophet, that well, I'm a prophet, we can prophesy. So what was uh, uh, Moses can do that we cannot do unto when God came and said, look, don't mess around with this man. So John was a forerunner and he did his job perfectly well. When Jewish leaders sent some messenger to go and ask him who was he, he told them without holding back any words, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then, who are you? Uh, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. They asked him about Elijah because the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 5 to 6, has said that, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And, listen, he will turn the heart of fathers to their children and the heart of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Praise God. So, he said to them, I'm not Elijah. Then they asked, are you the special one? If you are not Elijah, you are not the Christ, but are you the special one who has to come to speak for God? Just said, no. I, like I said a few seconds ago, He's not playing driver with Jesus Christ. He chose his own calling. That is what he has come to do. Forerunner. Forerunner. To pave the way for the Lord. Then they ask him, Then who are you? I, at least we must tell those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? We asked you, are you this? You said no. You Are you that? You said no. John said, I am the voice of one crying in the desert. I'm just simply a voice. Make the road straight for the Lord as the early preacher has, has said. That's just me. I'm just the lonely voice crying in the wilderness to make way for the Lord. Those who had sent, uh, those who have been sent, were from the proud religious law keepers. Those merchants have said, "They asked John again. Then why do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or that special one who has come to speak for God?" John answered, "I baptize with water, but there is one standing among you, whom you do not know yet. He is the one who is coming after me." I'm not good enough to get down and help him take off his shoes. I'm so small, so small to him. Praise God. I'm so small to him. So, all this happened when John was baptiz baptizing in the town of Bethany. He was, was on the other side of the Jordan River. Okay. When Jesus Christ came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. So, but John tried to deter him, saying, uh, Listen, young man, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Why? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Because if Jesus Christ had refused, they might be saying, uh, Look, somebody you called, you refused as well. So let us uh, fulfill all righteousness. The John now consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. And uh, we saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and um, alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Anyway, after that, John continues his preaching and telling people off and baptizing them. He's not scared of anybody. He's not scared of anybody. The end of his ministry started 
When he criticized and rebuked King Herod for divorcing his wife to marry his own niece, Herodias, who already had been married to his brother Philip. King Herod okay, divorced his own wife and also took the wife of his brother and married her, who was also a close relative, which was against the Lord of Moses, as stated in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 16. It says that, Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. And also in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 21, that says, If a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing, they shall be childless. Okay, King Herod Antipas, who ruled in the Galilee, in Galilee at that time, did not take kindly to this humiliating confrontation from John. A Jewish historian, Josephus, okay, and um, Josephus is, is a man that had lived in the biblical age and uh, he witnessed so many things which he actually wrote about. So jo Josephus said that one of the main reasons Herod took uh, John to prison was the influence John uh, was having on the people at that time. Okay, and he feared John might plan a coup against him because they would do whatever he asked them to do. People believe so much in him. But we, can, uh, we can't hold on that as the truth. What was not actually recorded in the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 14, verses 3 to 12, where it stated that Herod arrested John and banned him in prison because John had been telling him that it is not lawful for you to have the woman he has, he has taken from his brother who was also related to him. So, um, we are having a problem with Herod here. Herod divorced his wife. One. Number two, he took the wife of his brother and married her. John was not having that. He said, no, you cannot do that. Whoever you think you are, you cannot do that. So because of that confrontation, Herod wanted to kill him straight away. But because he feared people as they regarded John as a prophet, he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't do that straight away. So John saw that what Herod did violated the Mosaic law and he wouldn't just have it. He told him to his face. So Herod arrested him and kept him in prison. Okay, kept him in prison. So one day, Herod held a banquet for his birthday. And dignitaries were invited. On that day, the daughter of his wife from a previous marriage, who Josephus, I'm talking about that historian, the Jewish historian, said her name was Salome, was invited to come and dance to thrill the guest. Her dance was so pleasing to Herod that he asked her what she would like as a special gift, even to the half of his kingdom. Half of his kingdom for the dance, just for the dance. Half of your kingdom. Can you believe that? Maybe he was drunk. Somebody danced for you and you said she can ask anything. Up to the half of your kingdom. The girl was not even your own daughter. What would have happened if she has actually demanded for half of your kingdom? Herod even promised on oath to grant her whatever she asked for. Okay. The girl, being a young girl, she was not expecting anything more. So the girl moved to her mom for advice. What can I ask, mom? The mother took the advantage to silence her critics. He said to her, ask for the end of John in a platter. And that's what she did. She went back to Herod and said, I need the head of John on a platter. And the way she asked, all other guests, they had, they, they had her. Herod couldn't hide. Herod couldn't say no. Because he has said something to her that he has said it on oath that whatever you ask for, I will give it to you. So did the get her for the head of John um, on the platter? So, so bad because Herod has sworn on an oath. Even though history said um, Herod admired John for his honesty and goodness and was reluctant to kill him. But he did not have a choice. He never planned to do that. So Herod sent for John's head and the golden voice that was crying in the wilderness was silenced forever. His disciples came for his body and took it away for burial. 
John has played his role and departed in a dignified way. Life of John the Baptist, a powerful man that stood by God's word to the end, who Jesus called Elijah. He ministered in the spirit and power of Elijah. He had followers and after his death, some of his disciples still continued his works. Paul met 12 of them in Ephesus in the book of Acts chapter 19. And uh, they had conversation. Praise God. John's life is worth emulating. He did not deviate unlike many of us that moved from one calling to another, trying to see which one will suit the people so that we can be liked or respected. He didn't go from one calling to the other. His ministry only lasted just over two and a half years or so. Just over two years. There are some churches today that are holding John so high as they are doing with Jesus. Every year they celebrate his beheading. I think that was, there's a church in America. They actually are celebrating John beheading every year. Well, praise God. That is it for now, my brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining us this evening. We thank everyone that have joined us this evening to study with us on the great people of the Bible. Today was on John the Baptist, a man full of the Holy Spirit that came to pave way for the coming of the Messiah. Praise God. We thank you so much. We bless you. Uh, may the Almighty God touch you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are back on Friday for our Friday prayer meeting, which we called Prayer Changes Things. Please help us share this video and also visit our channel on YouTube and subscribe and um, and also click like. You click, click, click like so that we can know you visited. Praise God. Um, and like I said in the beginning, like I said in the beginning, um, if you have any question regarding our contribution regarding what I've, we have touched today um please you can because i couldn't see any do you have any question did you see any question there did you see any question there no so if you if maybe after this uh, particular program if you have any question you want to ask about what we touched today please try to um let us let us know write to us or you can make a leave a comment at the bottom of this video and we'll respond to you next week by the grace of god thanks so much everyone thanks for joining us we we um we pray that you will never lack any good things in your life and the almighty god will continue to bless you and your family you will live long you will live long you will live young in the name of jesus christ and god will bless you god will bless you richly in the name of jesus christ if you have been crying you will cry no more in the name of jesus if you are if you are if you lack that comes to an end today in the name of jesus christ we thank god for your life you 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 people you've been very wonderful please uh visit our youtube channel subscribe and click like so that we can know you visited the friday when we come your way again stay blessed <laughs>With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit.